Okay. All right. So, Rick, we're going to be discussing uh, some fascinating things about interesting experiences at a crab place with sommeliers and wines from the state of, not, not from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, the country, Georgia, I'm assuming. But, uh, but you know, you, you've been in this networking sort of environment for, for almost a decade and your group, uh, professional, the professional networking group or professional? Professional business referrals. And, and actually it's more than a decade. Um, mm -hmm. In 1982, mm -hmm. I heard of a group in Miami, I think it was called the Dade County 100 Club, something okay. like that. So I said, I said, wow, there isn't one in Broward. So I started a group in 1982 okay. called the 100 Club of Broward. Oh, and yeah. the goal was to get 100 different people, uh -huh. um, different professions, and we would uh -huh. all meet regularly and refer business to each other. So we oh, were okay. meeting for lunch and it was just a small group. But then... Um, that was before there were any of these national or internationally known networking groups. So I, I maybe like had BNI, one of the first BNI networking Like BNI is group. something that was yeah, that's already international. around? Yeah, That was started later. Oh, really? My, my group was before BNI existed, yeah. How interesting. And, and they referred to them as business network? How did they refer to them? Business referral um, groups? Networking or? groups or business referral groups, yeah. Mm -hmm. How fascinating. I think I always just looped them in with chamber groups, but how would you distinguish the distinction between the two actually? Uh, well, a chamber of commerce does more things and networking is only one of the things a chamber of commerce does. But our networking group, Professional Business Referrals, we only do one thing. We meet for okay. the purpose of developing relationships of trust, getting to know each uh -huh. other better, and then it makes it easy to refer business to each other. People want to refer business to people that they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And typically, I guess, for people that aren't aware, there's one of each category. Is that the way it worked in the, right. the 100, right. the 800? Yeah. yeah, so, it, and a perfect example would be my business. I've got a full service ad agency, so that means we do mm -hmm. a lot of things. We make trade show displays and TV commercials and do websites and social media marketing. We'll embroider your logo on a shirt and, and so on, but for the purpose of the group, I'm the web designer, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to join a group and says, we make TV commercials, great, they're welcome to join. If someone else says, we've got an embroidery shop, we embroider logos on polo shirts, great, they could join. So there's a lot of things I do, but for the group, I'm one thing, I'm the web guy. Ah, okay, love it, that's wonderful. We, we've seen similar things with attorneys that do mm -hmm. several different things, but mm -hmm. for the group, the attorney will pick and say, okay, I'm going to be the real estate attorney. And another yeah. attorney might, might be the um, uh, personal injury attorney, but that personal injury attorney might do other things too. But ah. for the group, they're the personal mm -hmm. injury attorney. Oh, thanks for explaining that, that little nuance that I, I don't even think I was aware of. I knew for the lawyers, they had different types of lawyers, but um, you had also mentioned, I think one of the groups you were involved with, usually there's only one realtor Per, per group or one commercial or one residential, but sometimes if the group is large enough, they could even break it off into regions if, or neighborhoods, right? If right, I was in a group where we had a residential real estate agent and then I guess that res residential person didn't do any commercial real estate. So we got a guy who did commercial real estate, mostly leasing. So if you want to lease an office, he's the guy to go to. And in mm. fact, I hired him two different times to first to rent an office and then to buy an office. But then um, the residential person said, you know, I only work here in East Fort Lauderdale. So he said, if, if you, you want to get someone to do West Broward, I wouldn't mind at all. So we got mm -hmm. someone else from Coral Springs who was doing out West. So we actually had three real estate agents in our group, we had 54 people in the group at the time. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. I, I remember when I was first starting to get introduced to these kind of groups that I've actually never joined or belonged myself, but I remember the dentist woman said she made 40,000 just from her seat at that chamber or at that BNI, that type of referral group. So I was really impressed. I was thinking that's an incredible amount. And can you share your experience about, about being a part of it for nine months and nothing happened and then you did uh, something different? What, what's a yeah. tip you can give to people about? Yeah, well, I, I didn't understand how it worked for mm -hmm. nine months. So I was planning on quitting. And what I would do is I'd go to all the meetings and I'd do my little commercial and just nothing was happening. 
And then someone said, well, you've got to do these meetings with the other people, get together with them, maybe go have coffee and, and talk about things and you find things in common. Maybe you like golf and they like golf or you like scuba diving and they like scuba diving. And so it gives you something to talk about and mm -hmm. then you get to know each other a little better. And when you do that, then the referrals just seem to come naturally. And then um, we had like a little networking exercise where a woman came in and she said, okay, take a piece of paper, draw three columns. In the first column, put a list of, well, this was after, let me, let me go back to the nine months of no okay. referral. Yeah. So I, I did, I took that advice and I started doing these meetings with the other people. I was doing one or two a week, just going out and meeting with the people. And then I started getting referrals. It did make a difference. And and after nine months of no referrals, I was just going to let my membership expire, keep going the remaining three months. But then in the last three months, I started getting the referrals. So it was pretty the nice. The got turned on. <laughs> yeah. So great? then, yeah. So then uh, later, someone came in and did a little networking exercise. So this woman says, draw three columns. In the first column, put everyone you've given a referral to. So I'm writing down all the names. Then she says, in the next column, put everyone that has given you a referral. So I write down those names. And then she says, now in the last column, write down everyone that you've had one of these one-to-one -one meetings with. Mm -hmm. And I wrote those down. And I think at the same moment, everyone in the room went, oh, they're all the same. It's all the same people. The people you have the one-to-ones with are the people you give referrals to. And they're the same people that give referrals to you. So it, it just took me a while to realize, but that's all it was. Just go meet with the people. Showing up at a meeting and talking for 30 seconds or 45 seconds, not enough. You've got to mm -hmm. meet with people, get to know them, give them a chance to get to know you. And then they want to refer business to people they know and trust. You know, and, and I loved what you all did. Yours was the first uh, Zoom sort of virtual networking event that I had attended right at the start of the pandemic. And I had just lost my job. So I figured, oh, let me just see, you know, what's going on here. Um, but I noticed last week, the exercise you guys did was very, uh, was very interesting. You, you all had people talk about some personal part during the introduction of the one or two minutes and then in the middle of the meeting. Can you tell people about those kind of ice breaking uh, sort of exercises as well? Because I, I thought that was very powerful, very interesting. Yeah, we tried to do something every week. So we start the meeting like this. Each person gets a minute to talk about um, what their business is, what they do, what kind of client they're looking to meet. And then just for fun, we'll, we'll um, also get to mention what we did over the weekend. If we did something fun, we can talk about that. It's a little icebreaker. Then after everyone's done that, then what we do is we have some kind of a networking exercise. So one time it was um, one of the members got the chance to run that networking exercise. And he said, I want everyone to tell two lies and a truth. So tell us two things that are sound believable, but they're lies about yourself. And then one thing that's actually true. So everyone did that. And you got to learn things like one person says, well, I used to be a policeman and you're going, no way. And he actually was, but who knew? <laughs> so you just learned more about the people in the group. So it was fun. Um, and tell us done... about your, yours was funny. I wouldn't have guessed that about you. The, the one that you said oh, about your was... majors and what you studied. Yeah, and... yeah I, I said my major in college was chemistry. My minor was biology. And then I decided to change and um, switch my major to advertising. So the two things that were true were my major was chemistry, my minor was biology, but I never did switch my major to advertising. <laughs> how funny, uh, how life just takes us in different directions that we wouldn't be aware of. So yeah, that, that's a neat exercise. And the one last week was about the, the travel um, and then the good or bad habit people picked up. So, you know, chance to get to know people a little more as a, an individual. So I thought that was... That was nice, but, and then, you know, as a neat side um, sort of benefit uh, of knowing people such as you in these groups, I know you have some interesting event coming up this week. I'm really enthusiastic about going because I love, love, love crab. So tell us about that. <laughs> well, before the um, pandemic, we were doing our meetings in person and we would meet at a restaurant. 
So instead of doing that network, networking exercise that we do in the middle of the meeting, we would have one person who, who would get 10 minutes to go into more detail about what they do. And we had a, a um, projector. So if they wanted to do a PowerPoint, they could show that. So we did a lot of that. But we would also about every month or two months, we would put on an outside networking event, usually in the evening. And it would include um, maybe drinks and some appetizers and people could hang out and get to know each other. And for that, we would open it up to the public. So we would invite I, I went other to that people. One. That's how I got, right. that's how I yeah. got introduced to you. Mm -hmm. Right, you went to one we had at Padrino's in, mm -hmm. in Dania, in their point. newest location. Correct. So, um, but now we've got an event where it just happens that a client of mine is opening a brand new restaurant on Wednesday of this week. And he wanted me to come over and take pictures. And I, I said, well, it's going to be boring pictures if it's just an empty restaurant. Why don't we invite people in, let them taste the food. Maybe we can get them to write good reviews if they love the food. So he agreed. So that's what we're doing. So now the members of our um, networking group are going to be going there. Not everyone, but uh, a bunch of us are going to go and we get to eat free food and and hang out together for one of the first times in a very long time. Yeah. And it'll, it'll be a good time. I found, you know, one or two of these type of seafood broil places myself a month ago. Uh, I mean, it sounds not a morbid thing, but both of my parents passed away on the same day, um, 21 years apart, both from cancer, but they were very healthy, extremely, you know, never drank, never smoked. But so anyways, anytime there's an anniversary, we always uh, eat crab because my mom loved crab. My dad used to take us to this rustic in place where they had the hammers and really tasty, amazing golden crab. But I think they don't really have it almost ever anymore just because it's not around. But um, but so I so right around the time of uh, my mom's birthday a month or two ago, I found this place. Yeah, it was last month. And uh, I got to eat all the very similar stuff that I think we're going to get to try this week. Um, but you had mentioned the other place that Yummy Crab has in uh, in Broward is close to the Sawgrass Mall. And last time, right. is that the place you did the event with the wine tasting yeah. and stuff? Or yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was great. There was a sommelier there. Mm -hmm. He used to work at one of the hotels on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Mm -hmm. And now he just started in importing wines from the Republic of Georgia, nice. which is where he's from. So the wines were from great varieties that I've never had before. They were amazing. So wow. we got, I don't know if we're doing that again this Wednesday, <laughs> but we'll find out. You should mention it just, you know, you could, in case he forgot, or, or maybe the sommelier is, is that there, maybe he can if he's still working with the, the restaurant, maybe he can uh, come and just introduce himself or introduce Georgian wines. I wasn't really aware that wines were really even made in that region, but they, they have fascinating food always. Uh, I, my, um, my cousin married a girl from Belarus, so once every week or two, they would invite me over You know, every few weeks, and I got to try interesting things, I think, from that whole region. I'm, I'm assuming is similar food, so, uh, so I'm enthusiastic to to try anything new or see any any new stuff. Um, what you know? What else is a, another tip you would give for people once they're at a networking event, whether it's virtual or in person? Is there something maybe you see people do incorrectly or that they could do better? You think just yeah. The, the uh, a good way to do things is to ask people about what they do and ask questions about that rather than like the Chamber of Commerce events that I've been to, it's just a bunch of people running around as fast as they can trying to stick a business card in your hand and then they're on to the next one. And you leave the event, you've got 50 business cards, you can't even remember who the people are and you throw them away and probably everyone's doing the same thing. <laughs> and, and so it's a waste of time. It's, we compare it in our networking group to what we call hunting or farming. So a hunter goes out and tries to shoot something so the hunter can eat that day. But in farming, you plant seeds and you water them and take care of them. And that's how our, our business referral group is. We want to um, develop relationships. So when we talk to another person in the group, it's not where I'm trying to sell you what I do and you're trying to sell me what you do. It's about getting to know each other. And then if I feel like, gee, Eva's nice, I like her, and maybe I can refer someone to her. And then if I do get lucky enough to refer someone to you first, then you feel obligated. So you feel like, God, Rick gave me this great client. What can I do for 
metric. So yeah. I've really tried hard to refer business to other people. That seems to make a big difference in how well you do in a networking group. And I've got a perfect example of that. In, in a networking group, there was a um, personal injury attorney. And the personal injury attorney is a nice enough guy, but he never got referrals. And after one year, he quit. And then a new guy joined, personal injury attorney. And I thought, well, he'll probably be here a year and quit. But what he did is he had me make his website and he hired someone else for something different. And he hired the computer repair guy to run cable in his new office. And he just kept hiring everyone in the room to do different things that he needed. And he was getting referrals like crazy. So I thought personal injury attorneys, this networking thing just doesn't work. But it was mm -hmm. the guy. It was the way he handled it. One guy just uh -huh. showed up to the meetings every week. The other guy got really involved and tried to give everyone else business. So that made a big difference. And you know, I, I, I've done, I just, no, no, go ahead. You've done what? I, uh, I've done well in networking groups. And after that first bad experience of nine months with no referrals, um, I went on to have my best year, which was $116,000 in my pocket. And then more, <laughs> yeah, more normal years, it's about 50,000 a year for me. So when I stand up and give a one minute, one minute commercial in the group, uh, 50,000 a year, you go, let's say you, maybe you miss a meeting or two, so you attend 50 meetings. It's like I got paid $1,000 to stand up and talk about what I do for a minute. That's incredible. That's good pay. <laughs> that is incredible. No, honestly, if, if people aren't familiar with these type of groups, I mean, you even told me about the, uh, was it the roofing guy? Like he just had so much business even from five years after that he yeah. couldn't keep up yeah, with he, the amount of referrals he was getting, right? Right. He left the group years ago and I started this new group, the professional business referrals group. And I contacted him. I didn't know if he was in the group or not. Uh -huh. He said, no, I, I can't do any more networking. I've still got so much business from that group we were in together years ago. And I said, how long you been out? And he said, five years. And mm -hmm. every day the phone rings and it's wow. a referral from someone from that group. Wow. That's, yeah, that's so really incredible. It right? really works. There was yeah. also a dentist in that group. Mm -hmm. And she had just moved from the west coast of Florida over to Fort Lauderdale. So she didn't know anyone. No one knew her. She joined our networking group and she finally had to quit the networking group because she just couldn't take any more patients. She was full. She was busy every right. single day. <laughs> from all of us either going to see her ourselves or referring friends and family and people that we know to her. So this is the takeaway, everyone. During this pandemic time, when everyone's trying to think of new strategies to reformulate their business or sort of gain extra contacts, it's it's important to think about networking or referrals or, or maybe giving first, so that so that you can really um, start getting referrals reciprocated to you possibly, you know, not necessarily for that reason, but, <laughs> but, uh, but no, that's very enlightening. Thank you, Rick, for sharing all that incredible information. I, I just started at um, uh, just uh, the last week or two at this um, managed service providers place. They do IT services and um, cybersecurity, or they set up networks, set up Wi-Fi, put things on the cloud or, or whatnot, help with compliance uh, with, with medical offices and all the sort. But the boss, all these last 20 years, that's how he got his business, just from the copier guy, from the internet guy. It was referrals, word of mouth. And uh, so it, it's very interesting that in certain businesses, if you know, if one knows how to make that work for them, it can really be just inspiring and incredible like you like you shared. So, so uh, thanks for sharing your your wealth and knowledge and, <laughs> and tips with us. Well, uh, another thing that I learned from being in networking groups is that you have no idea who's going to be your best source of referrals. And you might think you do. So I, I would always have people ask me, hey, can you fix this computer problem I'm having? And I go, no, I, I, I work outside the box. I, I, <laughs> but I know a guy who works in the box, he can fix it. So uh -huh. I assumed if people asked me to fix their computer, Maybe the guy who fixes computers, they ask him, can you make a website? Interesting. Yeah. I always thought that would be my best source of referrals. So far, that hasn't happened. Um, <laughs> and just strange examples that you would never think of, like uh -huh. 
we had a, a young woman, she sold gift baskets. So we did one-to-one -one meeting and found some mm -hmm. things we had in common. We talked, we hung out, uh, we're friends. And one day I gave her this idea about gift baskets. I said, so who are your best clients? She said, lawyers at the end of the year, they like to give a basket to their biggest clients. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, here's what you can do. Mm -hmm. Now my company will put your logo on anything. Why don't we put your the lawyer's logo on coffee mugs, notepads, pens. So now you can't buy one pen. You've got to buy maybe 500 pens or 100 <laughs> okay. or 100 yeah, yeah. coffee mugs. So now they've got all these mugs and pens and notepads with their logo on it. You stick those in the gift basket with the cookies and the whatever <laughs> else is in there. And so she started talking to lawyers about that. So they did it. They went for it. So yeah, I made a few dollars selling her pens. But oh. she made the big money because now her attorneys, instead of giving two or three gift baskets, they go, wow, I got all these pens and coffee mugs. I should give more gift baskets. So That's her business just grew like crazy. Wow. Then she sold the company. Okay. She, she got a job at the Miami Herald. Mm -hmm. And then she brought me in to meet her boss <laughs> wow. because the Miami Herald owns a lot of websites. They own more than just MiamiHerald.com. So I made a lot of websites really? for them. And did all kinds of work for four years. I was doing work every week for the Miami wow. Herald. So they became my biggest client. And it came from the gift basket lady. Who that's would ever think that? No, that's fascinating. And that, that's a great idea of just, you know, holidays are coming up. But you're, so what she did was you're saying she would print the lawyer's logos and she would also gift that to them or she was just asking them if they wanted to use that idea to gift like did yeah. she give it to them first as an example or you can't no. just print one or two no, no you, you can't to... so my company produces those in mm -hmm. our group again i'm the web designer but that is one of the things a full service ad agency does you want your logo Emotional on a coffee thing. mug a pen notepad right. we do yeah. it so i just told her about that i said if you tell the lawyers about this i think they'd like the idea and it's then they'd have idea. all these coffee mugs lying around. Yeah. They'd probably want to give more gift baskets. So they yeah, gave a yeah. lot more gift baskets. Wow. So that worked that really, really well for me. Creative idea. Yeah, that's that's yeah. incredible. That's you know, that's why people need to think out of the box, especially now when everyone's re sort of reassessing how they're gonna be getting attention in this in this saturated world of a million ads or products and 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 if people are mailing or dropping off these gift baskets over the holidays, I think that's a really splendid idea. That's uh, that's going to be uh, a neat idea. How many cups do people have to buy? What's the minimum? Or <laughs> um, on coffee mugs, I I think 144 is a good minimum where you you get them at a better price. You can get a smaller number, but it but they end up being more expensive. And, and what about the um, the notepads you said? How how many do people need to order of those just to kind of? Uh, there's like little little pads like this, maybe two inch by three inch, and you get I think twenty five sheets to a pad, mm -hmm. um, but you get five hundred of them. So it's it's a box about that big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think that's a great idea. I never really thought about these promotional items I always got at trade shows, but, uh, but I use a lot of them, you know, they're just the pens are floating around all the time. <laughs> I, and the, I also have bags with my logo and in the bag, mm -hmm. I put my company brochure, the notepad with my logo and website address and a pen with my logo, website address and phone number. And then when I go mm -hmm. out on an appointment to meet a client for the first time, I give them that and I tell them, I do this corny joke every time. And I tell them that you can never have enough, too many things with my logo on it. And they <laughs> laugh. And so it's like a little icebreaker, but right. um, it's yeah. just some gift I can give them when I walk in the door. Yeah. I, I just never sat around too much thinking about, about that. And, and certainly not, you know, I always see them more at trade shows or conferences, but I never necessarily thought about it in a gift basket sort of a context. So I, so I think that definitely is a unique idea and, and whatnot. So, or, or even when you go on appointments to do that, I don't think that's something I've seen people do as often. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so they can find you on adexcellence.com, right? That would be the advertising hyphen excellence.com. Okay. Lovely. And um, yeah, I guess I will see you tomorrow morning at the, uh, at your eight o'clock virtual zoom meeting and for the uh, professional business network or did I say it right professional business networking right
the, the group name is Professional Business Referrals. Referrals, okay. So we meet Tuesday morning at eight on Zoom. When we go back to meeting in person, we'll be doing that um, probably at 7 a.m. so mm. that we're finished before nine so everyone can go to their to their work and not have their day interrupted. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Okay, well, happy networking, everyone. And uh, yeah, thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. All right. See you soon. Bye.